Welcome back to the shop. We're working on the GTO again. If you watched the intro video, you saw that passenger side is not really happy when I'm launching this car at the track. It's got a bit of an oil canning problem. What's happening is, well, we got about 600 foot-pounds of torque from this thing. Once we put that through the transmission, the gearing multiplies that torque, makes it even worse, and it's twisting the whole car in this kind of fashion. The bottom of the bumper on the passenger side is going up. It's catching the pinch weld on the bottom of the quarter, which is doing this thing to the whole quarter panel, which is making the quarter panel buckle in the middle. The proper solution to this problem would be putting a full roll cage in the thing and stiffening the whole chassis up. These three letters here make this car worth way too much money for me to hack a roll cage into it, so that's not going to happen. So what else can we do to try and stiffen the thing up without taking value off of the car, without making it look like a race car while making it into a race car? Well, the one thing we can try doing that I haven't done yet is replace all of the body bushings. Right now we got these soft squishy rubber bushings between the frame and the body which is allowing the bumper to come up and hit the quarter panel because of that squishiness between the frame and the body. We're going to replace those soft squishy rubber bushings with these hard polyurethane bushings. It's not going to stiffen up the whole chassis much but again if it'll just stiffen up the difference between where the frame wants to move around and where the body is, maybe we can keep that quarter panel from buckling. Anyway, I got a long history of failing on things in the shop here, so we'll see how it goes. But at this point, we're going to try it. It's cheap enough, it's easy enough to do, maybe. Uh, we're going to see. Uh, but it's certainly worth an attempt. So, the instructions say that you really don't have to lift the body very much before you can pull the old rubber bushings out and slide the new poly bushings in. So I'm hoping that's going to be the case because there's a whole lot of stuff to disconnect between the body and the chassis if I have to lift the body any significant height. We're going to start on that side first because there's not a whole lot of critical connections on that side. So we'll see exactly how far I need to raise that side to swap the bushings out before we go to this side. This side has got the brake lines, the clutch linkage, the steering column, and probably other, other things that I'm forgetting about. Well, clutch linkage is easy to disconnect. Steering column, I'm going to have to disconnect even if we lift it just a little bit because it's got no give at all. But I'm hoping there's enough give in the brake lines themselves that we can lift the body a little bit without me having to disconnect anything. If it looks like that's not going to work, I'm just going to pull the master cylinder right off the firewall and just let it hang there rather than disconnecting the brake lines and deal with brake fluid um, everywhere. This thing does have silicone brake fluid in it. Uh, so it's not going to eat the paint if it leaks, but I just don't want to go through uh, dealing with bleeding the system and, and all of that hassle. Anyway, let's get the thing up on the lift. I'm going to change into my shop clothes. It's cooled down out here now. Um, it's cricket season, as you can tell. You can hear the cricket, hopefully, in the background. Uh, but at least it's cool enough here now that you don't have to see my chicken legs. I don't need to wear shorts. And I can wear a shirt that's got a bit of sleeve on it now, uh, too. So we'll get this thing up in the air. We'll buzz off all of the body bushings. Um, raise, that size, raise that side up a little bit. Pull the bushings out. Try and slide the new ones in. See how it goes. And then we'll come back and deal with this side. So let's get after it. Alright, we've got to undo the steering column, so 
And we're going to, ideally, get the ratchet in there, like that. Wrench on the other end. And drop the nut somewhere where I didn't even hear it hit the ground. Fantastic. doesn't want to come off. We might as well drop the washer too while we're at it. All right, we'll worry about that in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna give the uh, steering wheel a 180 degree turn so I can get at the other bolt. shot a little bit about there. And we've caught that nut. Excellent. So just the one has vanished. And we should be able to just push these bolts back through the rag joint in theory uh, um, yeah in theory that should work in practice it's being difficult let's get a pry bar Yeah, that's still not going. Um, the other thing I can do, which I really don't want to do, is undo this clamp here, and then I can just slide the steering column up a bit, and I can get it off the bolts, and then we shouldn't have a problem raising the body on those sides. So um, I don't really want to do that, because that's spring-loaded, and I'm a one-man outfit, so to try and pull the thing back down, fighting against that spring pressure, and then do this end up again, is going to be difficult, if not impossible, by myself. Um, ask me how I know, because um, that came loose during a race. <laughs> um, so let's um, let's try getting a hammer in there. And it barely fits in there, and I can't swing it far enough to make an, an effective hammer. So. Yeah, it looks like we're back to undoing this thing, which I didn't want to undo. Let's try and get that washer off there before I drop it. So, um, what size is that? That is less than half an inch. All right, 716 deep socket, and I need to turn the steering wheel a bit. Something like that. Okay, and you saw exactly what happened there. The little steering column just jumped up. Okay, so that is now clear. And I can, uh, I can lift the body without worrying about the steering column. Now the brake lines here Okay, we've got this big S curve in here that I'm hoping is going to take up some of the slack, but looking at the bushings underneath, I'm probably going to have to raise the body at least a half an inch, which um, I think is more than I'm willing to torture this brake line. So we're going to pull this thing off the firewall, and that I think is a 9 16 Yeah, so we'll get those sockets. That one's going to be tough to find. Okay, and I need to crawl underneath the dash and unhook the pedal. And uh, 
stop running my head into the camera, sorry. And I'm not going to bother dragging the camera underneath the dash because it's going to be ugly just trying to get my head under there. And uh, yeah, let's go do that. So we got all our parts laid out and there's a few different types of um, uh, bushings. So fortunately they've got the part numbers uh, stamped into them. So we've sorted them all out. So there's this group, these ones which have a bigger central hole, um, these pucks with the step on them, pucks with the step on them that are a bit shorter, pucks with the step on them that have the bigger hole that I'm guessing go with those bigger holes. We've got sleeves with the bigger holes that go with the pucks with the bigger holes. We've got washers with the bigger holes that go with the pucks with the bigger holes and depending on which bushing alongside of the car, um, different ones are going to go into different places. So like typical aftermarket stuff, the instructions suck and I've got a pair of bushings that are missing. So I've got eight bushings per side. The kit has given me seven bushings uh, per side. So yay aftermarket. Um, and the instructions are also wrong uh, because what they're calling out for the number three bushing here uh, that's different is no different um, on the car. It's got the same size bolt and everything else. So I don't know what I don't know what they're thinking, but anyway, we're going to try and make it work. So I'm going to take this mess and I'm going to sort it into the bushings that I think are going to fit on the car, starting at the front of the car and then working towards the back of the car um, and set it up for, uh, for each side. So let's get that sorted out. All right, according to the instructions, uh, I sorted these things out. So this is the front and this is the back of the car. So these are the ones that are going to go into the rad cradle. Um, they're slightly different. A um, little bit thinner bottom puck. Uh, these are the uh, number three ones. So these are the ones that are supposed to go in the middle of the frame, like right under the middle of the doors on both sides. The, the only thing that's different is they've got a bigger hole, like there's supposed to be a bigger bolt there, but there isn't. The bolt's the same size. Otherwise, the height of everything is the same. Um, and then all of the other combinations are all exactly the same. And again, at the firewall, we're supposed to have two per side. This kit only came with one per side. So we're going to leave the inner ones as the rubber bushings and put the solid ones um, on the outer bushings. So let's get swapping these things one by one. All right, how we're going to raise this thing is we've got a uh, one inch square tube here that is going to fit nicely between the pinch weld and our rocker molding. We've got a piece of two by four here and we've got our floor jack. So we are going to center this over the entire rocker panel. Ideally without the jack falling off. Uh, so something about like that. And we've covered our square tubing with tape because again we want to try and do this without losing any paint even though it's just the crickets which you can probably hear in the background that are going to see if I've scratched the paint on the pinch weld underneath the uh, rocker molding. All right so here we go. So so far, everything's going up, but not just the body. The frame is going up as well. Uh, and yeah, at what point does the body start separating? So I wonder, is there an extra body bushing here that I maybe forgot? I don't think so. Uh, Let me just get the pry bar because maybe the frame is actually stuck uh, to the body. So we're going to take some tension off of this. We're going to put a little bit of preload in it. And now I'll get a pry bar and see what happens. Okay, that one seems loose and ready to go. Same thing at the front here. Does 
the body just weigh that much? Yeah, I guess we got that much weight in the body. Which is a bit concerning because, uh, okay, we don't want to bend any sheet metal here. So let's hope my pinch weld has got some strength to it. Okay, this is getting a bit ridiculous because it feels like the tires are about to come off the ground and I'm not seeing the, oh, now we go. Okay, now I can start seeing the body is actually going up now. All right, so let's see if we can pull a bushing out. And it's loose, but nope, we need to go higher. And everything's still going up, not just the body. Okay, why? What's holding us up here? Okay, that one's loose. That one's loose. That one's loose. That one's loose. Uh, looks like we need a bit of help in the back here. So we're gonna add a, a second jack. And uh, yeah, I jack things up in the back. Okay, here's what we've got going on in the back. We've added another jack here. Um, we're jacking the body, had a really solid point there where the inner wheelhouse uh, meets the trunk floor. Um, there's a whole bunch of body panels all coming together there, so it's got some stiffness and strength. And as we go up, I can see the body going up and the frame isn't, so that should release those bushings. So let's see what we can, we can do in here. Okay, so they are coming loose, but we still got a ways to go before I can pull them out. So back to the jacks.
All right, we got all the bushings in, got all the bolts in after struggling to line up some of the stuff. Got everything torqued, so just need to drop the car back down, hook up the steering column, hook up the master cylinder again, try and remember whatever else I've forgotten about already. And uh, we're good to go. So we'll take it to the racetrack, we'll strap the GoPro onto the quarter panel on the passenger side, give her a couple of launches and uh, see if the problem's gone. Let's hope. back from the track and uh, I'm not sure if you can see it with the lighting in here but um, there was a small permanent crease in the quarter panel here that I already talked to a paintless dent removal guy said he could pop it out no problem um, but we're gonna call this effort a colossal fail because it actually made it worse um, so there's a crease um, up top here now um, the small permanent dent has become a much larger permanent dent and it's actually bowed out um, this part of the quarter panel too. So um, you win some, you lose some and lately I've been losing a lot. Anyway, you can't, uh, can't lose them all. Uh, so eventually I'm going to do something right uh, in the shop here and you'll see it on this channel. So thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, uh, we'll see you on the next adventure and hope that that one actually works out. And I jammed it in there so hard now I can't get it out without tools, which I don't have. I imagine there's a three there. That was my shine. That was my beard. I need makeup. I need plastic surgery. Welcome back to the shop. We're working on the GTO game. The proper solution to this problem, the proper solution to this problem would to be, 